Good, good morning, everyone. Um, the strategic role of the Treasurer is a really big and broad topic. And in thinking about it, I wanted to put a little bit of a, a different spin on it um, before we get into the, the panel discussion. Um, you might have some uh, expectations uh, about what you're expecting to hear on this topic. Um, perhaps you might think that uh, I'm going to talk to you about what it is about the role of Treasury that's strategic and why. Well, I don't want to do that right here and now. I want to start off with a slightly different slant um, because I think that everyone here already knows and understands how deeply strategic Treasuries are. Uh, they understand that the Treasury, or you understand that the Treasury function is at the heart of, of your organisation, at its core to the short, medium and long-term functioning of the organisation. We touch all parts of the organisation and we are connected and we are the connection between the organisation and the financial markets. So the issue in, in my view um, is, is not that we aren't strategic, we are, it's just that perhaps not everyone in the organisations that we work in sees us like that. Um, and it can be very hard sometimes to feel like we have a presence or a voice or that people really want to listen to us. So I want to talk to you about, briefly, about how to be strategic and how to ensure that your role is strategic. So this is all about you and how you can bring that to life. And I'd also like to leave you with the thought that it's not just about how you can go about doing your current job in a strategic or a more strategic way, it's also about your career and your development, which I suggest you need to be strategic about as well. So I'd like to offer you a few thoughts. Firstly, um, derived from a conversation I had with a recruitment specialist, and secondly, based on two seminal points in my own career from which I hope to draw out some key insights uh, for you to think about as it relates to you. Firstly, um, my conversation with a recruitment specialist, uh, uh, Jennifer Good. I've known her for a number of years, as, as has Graham. Uh, I caught up with her a few months ago and she made a comment that intrigued me. She said, some treasurers and treasuries aren't strategic anymore. So when I was invited to uh, speak at this session, I thought it'd be great to go and have a chat with her and just see what she meant. So I caught up uh, with her again a, a week or so ago and we had a, a long conversation about, about what it was that she meant and she didn't hold back and I'd like to share some of her thoughts with you. Um, she said to me, she said, some treasuries have mistaken tactical processes for strategy. She said, technology has whittled the size of treasuries and also some treasuries have allowed some of the strategic parts to be taken away, for example, corporate finance or M&A. She, she said, if your treasury function is too small, you risk getting caught up and bogged down in the operational and tactical stuff, not the strategic stuff. She sees some treasuries as caught up in the importance of being bankers for the business. What, what she thinks treasuries need to do is to see themselves as a conduit between the business and the financial markets for the organisation. So how do you do that? She had a couple of suggestions. Firstly, understand the business of your organisation understand the strategy of your organisation and build relationships with the people in the business. It all sounds very obvious, um, but it's easier said than done. How do you do that? Or well, talk to people in the business and be proactive and not reactive and use information from the business in a strategic and proactive way. And to do that as well, you need to take time out of your day job and, and not get bogged down in, in the mire of, of, of just doing your daily operational stuff. So create some time and space to spend understanding the business, the business strategy and, and building relationships. I thought that was a very, very insightful um, uh, set of thoughts from her. Uh, the, the second thing that, that I want to get on and talk to you about is a couple of very significant periods in my career, which at the time I wasn't aware of, but, but uh, both periods proved to be times when I, I really made my role strategic. Um, both periods enabled me to see and connect to the business strategy and were periods when I became very empowered and developed great clarity about my role and how it fitted into the wider organisation. And I really hope that you can relate to these experiences uh, with, with your own experiences or, or get ideas um, that you can use about what happened to me. And what happened to me didn't happen in a light bulb moment. Um, it, it evolved over, over a period of time. 
and, and I, I spent about 20 years with BP, um, about 12 of which was within the, the Treasury function in one form or another. So the first period uh, goes back to 1999 when I was with BP. I was part of the Treasury team in Australia working in the corporate finance area. Uh, our team then had about 12 people in it. It was a dealing room, a middle office, a back office, corporate finance and, and a regional treasurer. Then in early 1999, um, the Australian team merged with the Asian team, which was based in Singapore. And that was a result of technology improvements, cost pressures, pressures, and the small scale of uh, BP's operations in Australia relative to the rest of the group. Um, the only people left in the Australian team uh, was myself and a Treasury operations manager who uh, re relocated to London shortly afterwards. So I was on my own. I was pretty busy just carrying on doing my normal job um, but working as part of a virtual team. Then one day, um, the president of BP in Australia came into the lift I was in, and he said to me, he said, well, Bronwyn, as far as BP Treasury in Australia is concerned, you're it. He said, step into the space. I've got a lot of faith in you. I'm not sure if he ever knew the impact this conversation had on me. Uh, it changed the way I thought about myself and about what I could do. I'd never really thought about myself in that way before. Um, I was empowered, I was inspired, and I felt supported. And in hindsight, I think these are really critical factors uh, to being strategic. A another, uh, another insight uh, this wonderful guy gave me is Greg Bourne. Um, he said, uh, around that time, I'd, I'd become um, also very interested in, in what's now called sustainability or uh, corporate social responsibility. At that time, the global CEO, Lord Brown, had a catchphrase that BP was to be a force for good. That really excited me. And while I could see the connection between that and my personal values, I really didn't see the linkage to my role, again, until the BP Australia president came along. Um, he was preparing a speech for a United Nations conference. And he sent me an email and asked me to uh, offer some thoughts on the role of capital markets in relation to corporate social responsibility. And I also uh, gave him some thoughts about the role of corporate finance in relation to corporate social responsibility. And I don't think I've ever really looked back from, from that point. Um, at that time also, I became very passionate and active in the organisation about financial analysis, real options thinking, and the group-wide financial skills development that was occurring at that time. And that provided me with some wonderful opportunities to connect with the business activity across the Asia-Pacific region. So some sort of insights perhaps to draw from this, I think, is that once you've drawn the link between your role and the organisational strategy or its vision, it's much easier to make more and more linkages and to join the dots between what you do and the strategy. And doing this is incredibly empowering and energising. It takes you outside of yourself and you find yourself becoming creative and innovative in new ways. So it's really how you think about yourself. It's about feeling empowered and being supported and consciously looking for linkages from your role to the organisation strategy. And you need to take time out of your day job to do that, I think. Um, there's another period I want to talk to you about, which we, we fast forward to 2001 to 2003. Um, I relocated to London and became the chief of staff of the global treasury function, reporting directly to the group treasurer, who is one of the six most senior people in the organisation. Um, prior to this role, I think my ambition had been to become a leading expert in BP on structured finance. I'm sure I would have enjoyed that, but it would have been a very different path, and I'm glad that this opportunity opened up for me, although it was far from easy at, at, at some points in time. There are, I can't talk in great detail about it because I don't have all the time, but there are two things I want to draw out of this experience for you. Firstly, the chief of staff role was concerned with the performance management of the global treasury function. And it was also concerned with developing a vision for the, for the function, setting targets and monitoring progress against the targets and working with people to make it happen. Um, this role uh, provided me with some great experiences, insights and tools that I've used and drawn from immensely ever since. Um, and there are two thoughts that might resonate with you perhaps. Firstly, um, by necessity, um, I, I was lifted to working at the helicopter level of the organisation. And from that vantage point, it's much easier to think and operate strategically because you can see the wood for the trees. So a thought for you is that 
you should try and lift yourself to the helicopter level of the organisation as well. I think holistically and, and strategically, and you need to create some time and space for that. Um, secondly, again, I was really, really lucky. There's no doubt about it. The group treasurer was a great leader. Um, he went on to become the CEO of the BP group uh, after, after this role. Um, through him, I learnt the importance of context, which is all about strategy and, and linkage between the organisation and the external world. Uh, without context, your role is extremely limited. Another thing I learnt from him is to think of myself as a leader and to act as a leader. And, and actually, that was a really good thing about BP. Um, they had this sort of, everyone's a leader, and, and you should think about yourself like that as well. Um, Another insight I'd like to share from you, which is um, you may be surprised to hear that the BP Treasury suffered an image problem. We were a global team of about 250 very capable people in an organisation of approximately 100,000 people. Sometimes we felt on the sidelines, we felt underutilised, not involved and unloved. We didn't feel strategic to the rest of the organisation. Um, and I, I, I think that's not uncommon amongst Treasury types and perhaps it's not uncommon uh, with people with specialist skills who are a minor minority in the organisation in which that they work. Anyway, in order to address this image problem that we had, we developed a vision, a strategy and some projects and actions which were, uh, were about closing the gap between where we were and where we wanted to be. And what we wanted to be was the world's best corporate bank and we had four pillars uh, that, that supported that. Operational excellence, customer server, service leadership, innovation, and, and people. Um, and in relation to each pillar, we developed projects initiatives, which had a project champion and team teams drawn from different parts of the Treasury organisation. And, and these projects enabled us to be strategic, and most importantly, to see ourselves as being strategic to the rest of the organisation. So, before we start our, um, our, our panel discussion, I think in summary what I uh, hope you've drawn out of uh, the points I've made is that being strategic, I think, depends on how you think about yourself, depends on and requires you to feel empowered and inspired. You should think about yourself as a leader and, and make sure you've got context. Understand your business, understand the business strategy, understand the external markets and build relationships. Obviously, Amcor is a very defensive um, global business, 43-odd um, countries, um, and really the, the risk level or the risk tolerance level is, is quite low, I guess, quite, quite a conservative company um, with, with low volatility. So I think Bronwyn drew out a very good point around ensuring that the corporate strategy matches the, the treasury strategy, the, the corporate treasury strategy. And uh, um, what I did, you know, I, I was in an interim acting treasurer role for about seven months um, and I had a, some good advice from, from various people, uh, various bits of advice from people in the market but one of the things was well actually go back and, and actually listen to what your MD is actually saying to the shareholders and to the market and <clears throat> what that basically, I mean these are motherhood statements I know but basically it was well we want to grow the business, we want to look at emerging markets, um, m and is on the table, we need to be flexible and we need to be adaptable. So what it, you know, in terms of a treasury context, you need to ensure that you've got those um, building blocks to ensure that you can support um, the operating profile of the business. With, um, <clears throat> with the demerger, you know, clearly we were either one or two in most of our markets and the focus was really around um, capital management and efficiency. Um, Aurora, which is the spun off entity, obviously operated in, while well, it was packaging, was a very different operating profile in terms of, of the packaging space around uh, fibre packaging and, and beverage cans and what have you, whereas the, the rest of Amcor was very much a plastics-based business. And so the competing demands for capital made that the rationale, if you're a believer in, in, in that kind of strategy, that, uh, that the, the demerger made a lot of sense in terms of um, priorities and we'd spent nearly a billion dollars in new paper mills and new um, glass furnaces in South Australia. And uh, the key thing really, David, was, was around um, the competing needs for capital and, and being able to focus on core, core markets. So, Graeme, what do you feel your role was in terms of um, sort of helping 
the organisation sort of de deliver on that strategy in terms of uh, perhaps in terms of funding and in terms of how you. I know. I know and I confess I don't think I put them in my notes, but we sort of discussed how one of the outcomes of um, uh, the restructure is you, you've now got a refinance balance sheet and it, it actually affects your um, you know, covenant structures and things like that. Yeah, I think we took a look at, um, you know, probably two years ago was, well, you know, Amcor's a very um, cash flow generated business, spins off a lot of cash. And we looked at our covenant, our management target position to say, look, you know, our major debt, that target was a gearing, you know, a static balance sheet measure. And I was like, well, is that really supporting um, the, the business the best way, best way it could? So we actually did a lot of work and analysis to actually um, um, revise the, the gearing metric and move to a leverage-based cash flow measure, so uh, net debt over EBITDA. And that just very much suits the operating profile of the business around the, the generative nature of the business, um, the EBITDA. That it, that it generates. And, um, you know, it's obviously a market measure that's much more accepted. So I think that's a good example, David, of where we've been able to adjust um, some of our internal treasury targets to, to match the corporate uh, the strategy of the business. Absolutely. Now, switching it back to, to Bronwyn, um, I guess, um, Bronwyn, you talked a little bit about your career in general, but if we were to talk a little bit about Oz Minerals, what, what, is the, what is your role as treasurer of Oz Minerals in sort of helping the organisation deliver its strategy? Well, I think like... Is, is oh. Closer. OK. Uh, well, it's working now. Um, I think like uh, all uh, treasurers and treasury functions, uh, in Oz Minerals, we have responsibility for uh, uh, managing the funding requirements of the organisation, short, medium and long term, as well as managing the financial risks. Um, that's you know, that's a, a, another statement of, of the obvious, but I think the, the issue for us, again, is, a, is about understanding what the organisation wants to do. And Oz Minerals has had an aspiration to grow, both organically and inorganically. So in thinking about that, in, in the Treasury sense, what we have needed to do is to make sure that when we're putting in place funding for the group that we, we don't constrain it by having, for example, onerous, um, onerous restrictive financing that might be really cheap but, but very, very restrictive. Um, so I, th I think that's, that's one issue where we, we um, look to support the strategy. And I think in, in contrast, but somewhat similarly to, to Graham, um, Treasury and the risks that we manage, we have a fairly conservative approach. The reason for that is because the rest of the business, it takes enormous risks. So mining is very, operating mines is very risky. Um, exploring is risky. Um, exposure to commodity prices is, is very, very volatile. There's a lot of volatility, which could literally have a several hundred million dollars difference on, on the, the bottom line, just a movement in, in the commodity price over the years. So as a result, um, uh, if, for example, with our cash investments, um, we, we don't take risks with that. <laughs> we don't add to the risk of the organisation. Um, so I think that's an, an example. But I, I guess an, another, another example, which is just sort of highlights how everything you do in, strate in, in Treasury is strategic. Um, we benefit, Andrew Jansen's here in the audience, Andrew. Here he is. He's our senior treasury analyst, and he joined uh, us at uh, the beginning of last year. Prior to that point in time, we had uh, our treasury uh, system was underutilised. We were very much Excel users. We produced lovely reports, but it was you know, not, not, very, uh, not very good. But what Andrew's done is um, uh, moved a lot of our information now into a treasury system, which, again, is linked to our growth strategy because it's scalable, whereas you know, Excel spreadsheets and manual, manual duplication of data and so on is, is not, not, not very efficient at all. So that's another example of, of, of how I think uh, tr Treasury does support the strategy of the, of the business. Now, um, Graeme, I'm going to, uh, knowing a little bit more about how Bromwood does it, I'm going to pose this in sort of in terms of what I understand Oz Minerals does and Bromwood can respond later. But I, um, Enterprise risk management is something that um, um, a treasurer is potentially positioned to do very well because uh, um, they, they, they're seeing, the, um, see, seeing cash coming in from the, the whole of the business and so they're seeing the early warning signs of any, whether there's any issues. Now you're running a treasury for a company that's in 40, 43 different countries. How do, you, how do you sort of, is it purely through um, 
technology that you're keeping track of um, your uh, your flows, or is it? Do you have some processes in place where, with committees and things? Uh, David, it's a, it's a combination of a few of the things you said, but um, similar to Bronwyn, you know, we're we're behind the times. I'd be totally honest in terms of technology, so we're we're going through a, a process now to to update technology, but. What, what I did when I got the role was actually to step back and say, well, how, how best should we structure the Treasury? And being in 43 countries, you know, I, I guess the trend has been that most corporate treasuries are centralised in, in nature. Um, but my, my decision and, 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 and the, with the support of the CFI was actually to make sure that we had regional treasuries in Zurich um, and in Miami and, and now in Singapore um, to ensure that the tactical day-to-day um, -day uh, treasury operation was carried out in in combination with the business. So, in terms of cash, David, yes, I mean obviously we we forecast quite rigorously um, on a regular basis. Um, but the, really, the treasuries via you know their cash pooling structures that we've set up post um, some of the bigger M and A that we did, that ensures that we we keep track from a from a regional centre point of view around um, cash flow and 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 the movements in cash. And, um, and Bronwyn, I know cash flow forecasting is a very important part of your role and, um, uh, and I guess there's a, there's a tale that you, you told, I might ask you to re retell it again, but also just sort of the importance to you for uh, ha being part of that enterprise risk process at, at Oz Minerals. So there's sort of two questions Yes, there's two there. questions you, there. You want me to tell that story about the STCF, the uh, short-term cash forecasting thing? Why not, yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> um, yeah, uh, Oz Minerals, you may not... You may or may not know uh, the history of Oz Minerals. It uh, formed uh, just prior to the GFC, actually. Uh, it was a merger between Oxiana and, and Zinefex. And um, we had a, 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 a need to refinance our debt uh, in, the, in the period. Um, uh, we, we merged in about June, and uh, uh, we had to complete refinancing by about November. And in a normal environment, that would have been fine. Um, but uh, the layman's collapse happened in September, and then in October, commodity prices fell off a cliff. And what I found a little bit alarming uh, back then was that we weren't uh, completely integrated as an organisation. I mean, it takes a long time to bring two organisations together. And uh, uh, our accounting team, for example, produced the accounts for the prior month by about day 25. Uh, and so actually in terms of real-time information, although it wasn't designed for that purpose, um, the daily uh, uh, bank account balance in term deposit information uh, and the weekly short-term cash forecast produced by the Treasury team uh, was the best financial information that, that the company had. And we had a liquidity problem. Um, and that liquidity problem uh, uh, sort of grew a bit bigger and bigger. Um, and, and anyway, Long story short, what we did was we uh, massively improved our short-term cash forecast process uh, and linked that to um, uh, payment of, of invoices. And I've held on to that uh, process to this very day. So what happened was that uh, we, we, we made the whole forecasting process uh, uh, a really important thing for everyone in the organisation so that the executive general managers uh, um, uh, bought into it and we got a lot of support. Um, we did variance analysis each week, but one of the really key things is that um, unless people had included in the forecast their invoice for payment, it didn't get paid, and it only got paid if I approved it. And uh, um, I think it's, it's a very important um, discipline, I think, that we learnt the very hard way, and I think once you learn that discipline, you never, ever let it go, and I'm never going to let that go. And it sounds like you've actually sort of, uh, in so doing, you've actually changed the culture of the organisation mm, as well, which mm, is part mm, of being strategic. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, ca and that, that's also liquidity risk management is a key part of an enterprise approach to uh, risk uh, as well. Uh, absolutely. And there's a lot more to an enterprise risk management, uh, of course, but I think the Treasury function is very well placed to add great value to its organisation enterprise-wide. Uh, risk management process uh, because we see across the whole organisation we manage a lot of the risks, a lot of the big risks and, and I think our processes and our systems and our measurement of, of, of risk we have a lot to offer. Mm -hmm.